the liabilities of this issuing central bank are worthless. And that's what happens to every central bank in history. No, no exceptions. None. The only exceptions are the ones that exist now because the ones before them went bankrupt. But these will go bankrupt too. The question is, where do you want to be when that happens? And I would want to be in real money. With gold, there's, there's different things going on. Um, <laughs> for gold, there has been uh, July. This past July was the biggest drawdown physically of gold supplies. I mean, the actual metal moving. When, when, there's two things that we need to talk about here with uh, when we're talking about gold in the COMEX. Right? There's deliveries um, and there's loading out. Um, standing for delivery means getting a warrant. It's just a, a, a piece of paper or a digital certificate that whatever physical gold exists in, in whatever vault belongs to you. Uh, but then moving it out is a different process called loading out. And that's what I couldn't end up. I, cu I couldn't do it when I tried to on the COMEX because my broker wouldn't let me. And I'd have to try again with a different broker when I tried this personally. Uh, but in terms of loading out, meaning the physical removal of gold on the COMEX, that was at a record high all time, all time record high last July, and it's still going. With silver, uh, it's a little bit different. We have been trending down sharply in silver supplies since silver squeeze, which was on February 2021. I think we were at a, a high of 152 million ounces of silver, and now we're down to about 55 million. So almost 100 million ounces of silver registered silver has been drained from the COMEX and that is different from gold because that silver isn't physically moving yet it's still there it's just being transferred from registered supply which means registered supplies sold uh used to set used to back um contracts on the futures market and it's moving into eligible which means it's no longer being sold against contracts and it's just being stored by someone for who knows what reason um private wealth or for a mint to uh for raw silver material, for, for not raw silver material, for um, bullion to make into coins. For whatever reason, no, nobody knows because the eligible supply, nobody knows who owns it. But in London, in, on the LBMA, silver is moving down fast. Um, it's below 1 billion ounces now for the first time since, what was it, 20, 2008, 2009, something like that, uh, over 10 years ago. And that is being drawn down physically. So whether we need to see silver actually move out of the stores in COMEX, I don't, I'm not convinced we have to see that, but gold, I would like to see that uh, because, uh, because gold coins, when they are decentralized and they're taken out of big banks like JP Morgan, that would mean that when there's another pressure on the price moving higher, they can't just, you know, they can't just sell more that they, in contracts that they have in the COMEX because uh, that would that would that would lower the price if it existed. But if there's not enough supply there, then it, uh, a higher price would be sustained. Well, we can sharpen that question. It's not that I have confidence that gold will regain its preeminence. It has nothing to regain uh, because if we're going to say it's going to regain it, then it doesn't have it now. No, gold is money right now. Meaning when you when you transfer any <clears throat> any dollar or uh, or yen or euro or whatever, what it is that you are doing is you are transferring a derivative of gold or silver. That's what that's what you're doing now. Now, the, the question is not when gold will regain its preeminence, but when fiat currency uh, as a substitute for gold and silver will lose its preeminence as the way to transfer gold and silver when making a transaction. So, do I believe that gold and silver as gold substitutes will lose their preeminence for the for the, the main method of transferring real money, which is gold and silver? Yes, they will lose that status because statistically, every single gold and silver substitute that has ever been known to man in all of financial history has all fallen to zero. So do I think this will be the first exception in world history? No. I'm not naive, and I don't believe that. <clears throat> now, the, the question is always when and, <clears throat> and how. Um, we don't know the answer to that question exactly when, but we do know that for the first time since 19, late 1970s, early 1980s, 
the Federal Reserve, which is arguably the most powerful central bank as the issuer of the world's reserve currency, they are in negative equity for the first time since 1980, meaning the, the, the assets on their balance sheet are losing value. And, uh, you know, as they own assets and those are bonds, mostly treasuries and mortgage backed securities and the values of those, the value of those securities fall when you hike interest rates. And so the dollar, which is chiefly backed by those assets, treasuries and mortgage backed securities and a slight little amount of gold in Fort Knox, which is also on their balance sheet, those assets are losing value. And meanwhile, the Fed has to pay more and more in interest on the excess reserves that it pays these banks. It has, there's, there's something like $5 trillion in, in, um, in reserves, plus all the reverse repos that all this cash that the, that the, the banks can't really do anything with. So they loan it back to the Fed and the Fed pays interest on those reserves. Uh, so they have to pay, the Fed has to pay more and more and more of that, of those dollars out to banks and they're getting less and less and less on their assets, on their balance sheets. So they're losing money. And the, the financial definition of hyperinflation, you can define it in consumer terms as when the desire to hold cash balances falls to zero. You can try to define it in terms of the rate of price increases in the consumer sector, or you can define it financially as when a central bank, the issuer of that currency goes bankrupt. How can an issuer of money go bankrupt when it's, it's not an issuer of money, it's an issuer of money substitutes. When those money substitutes no longer substitute for real money and the value of those substitutes go to zero. That's the financial in definition of hyperinflation. The liabilities of this issuing central bank are worthless. And that's what happens to every central bank in history. No, no exceptions, none. The only exceptions are the ones that exist now because the other ones before them went bankrupt, but these will go bankrupt too. The question is, where do you want to be when that happens? And I would want to be in real money. They printed so much, uh, so many un, uh, dollars since COVID and, and really since 2008, that there's all this extra cash that the Fed has to pay the banks on those reserves or the banks will have to try to loan them out into the economy. And that would, that would be catastrophic for the dollar because then all of a sudden you'd have these trillions of dollars in the, in the economy that weren't there the day before. And what happens to the value of the dollar then? I mean, it would just be, it would be unprecedented. Everything that's been happening since 2008 is unprecedented, but it would just be another unprecedented thing within the unprecedented chain of events that's happened uh, the last 12, 13 years. And so they're, they're paying, they're paying the banks to keep them in and they're going to have to pay more and more and more. So it puts them in an impossible situation. Either they suffer the, the losses on their balance sheet, um, which means that the dollars that they have to issue these banks to keep their reserves inside the Federal Reserve System, those dollars are literally unbacked because the, the dollars that have come into existence until now, how they come into existence is they buy treasuries. Like the Fed takes in the asset of treasury on its balance sheet and then in return gives the liability of the dollar to whoever they're buying the treasury from, which is usually JP Morgan or some commercial bank. Right? So JP Morgan gets these reserves and the Fed gets an asset. But if the Fed has to pay interest on the reserves that JP Morgan already has, how do they bring those dollars into existence to pay JP Morgan? They bring them into existence with, without getting any asset in return. So there you have a truly unbacked dollar. Now it all gets mashed up and you know they're all fungible. So what you have is a higher and higher base of dollars backed by fewer and fewer and fewer assets, which functionally makes the dollar worth less. And uh, that's what's, that's where we are now. And now it's just it's just we're already going downhill. There's no way the Fed can stop its losses without printing more money and buying more bonds. That's what it's going to have to do. It's going to have to reverse interest rates. And we all know what's going to happen to gold and silver when they reverse interest rates, when price inflation, as they measure it, is around 10 percent. You know, everyone's going to say, oh, forget it. The dollar is gone. We're going to we're going to go to real money. That's that's what's going to happen. So it's one thing or the other. I mean, we're just we see the Fed being sandwiched in on both sides both directions either they lose money on their balance sheet or they destroy the dollar and they're running out of maneuvering room it's just a matter of time just waiting for that singularity to hit where they cannot move anymore and everything explodes and i think it's going to happen suddenly um when it, when it starts to move everyone is going to know at the same time what is happening and we're not far away from that i don't think we're years away i think we're months away despite what's going on in the gold and silver markets